everybody, Mike Steele here with Barbecue Champs Academy Live, and we've got a great show lined up for everybody tonight. We've got Mr. Ed Riley with B&B Charcoal uh, going to be with us to talk a little bit about charcoal and uh, uh, what they've got going on with the new company that is uh, taking over um, the reins with them and going to explain all this stuff and let us kind of know what's going on. I've been talking with him a little bit for about the last 15 minutes. And he's going to be able to kind of go into some great detail and tell everybody what's going on. I know the supply chain's been a little tight, but they're they're doing things to try to remedy that. But it's going to be a great show, and I hope everybody sticks around uh, till the end of this show because we've got a lot of questions that we'll continue to ask, and uh, we want as many people uh, to get questions answered as possible. So uh, we got few folks coming in steadily showing up here we're going to just kind of recognize everybody that's always here with us every week week in and week out we appreciate you so much brandon thank you sir happy birthday to me yes it's been a great day i appreciate all the the uh, birthday wishes uh, that i have been flooded with on facebook today <laughs> hundreds of them and i've been trying to take my time to go through and like all of them i got to get down after this show and thank everybody but thank you so much for all the uh, birthday wishes scott glad to have you with us today and brandon congratulations man on another outstanding outing in your ancillaries you are just absolutely doing a wonderful job <laughs> and certainly want to congratulate you scott good to have you here man you're always one of our loyal listeners one of the first ones on appreciate you being here daniel thank you for being here as well uh rick Man, I tell you what, I think if I recall, you had a big first place win this weekend at the SCA competition up north. So congratulations on that. And um, certainly proud of you and what you are accomplishing this year. Angel, certainly glad to have you with us today as always. Uh, Corby is with us. Thank you. appreciate the birthday wishes. I've had several of those going around today, and I appreciate it. Caitlin, thank you for being here, and I think you had a pretty good showing uh, as well. Uh, John, thank you for being here. I'm up in the beautiful Madison, Wisconsin. I've never got a chance to go up in that area, but I've always wanted to do so. And uh, one day I'm going to have to get up that away. Mr. Terry Rome, world champs in the house. Had, glad to have you with us, Terry. Uh, Russ Johnson's with us today. Uh, Papa Joe Grilling Supply in Hutto, Texas. Mike, happy birthday. Hope you're having a great one. Yes, it has been a great, great day. Mr. Big Jim Hudgens with us. Glad to have you here, Mr. Jim. Um, Sean, good to have you with us today. Chuck's with us. We got several people coming in. Got my golden ticket this weekend on B&B &B Charcoal. That is absolutely awesome. Uh, keep it up, man. That's all I can tell you. Be patient with them. They're getting things worked out. And we're going to have hopefully a huge supply of B&B &B down, the, down the road. Just give them a little bit of time. Ashley, good to have you with us here, brother. Appreciate it. Nakia. Wasn't aware it's your birthday. Maybe we can get an orange bag priceless. <laughs> I love it. Yes, sir. I got a bunch of it myself. When I, I, I caught it on, uh, on at Ace Hardware, and I ordered up about 10 or 12 bags of it. I didn't want to knock it out all at once. I think that's the biggest thing. It's kind of like the toilet paper. Everybody sees it. They buy every stinking bag that's out there, and then they, they're left with none. And I think that's what's probably killing the supply chain, just like it was uh, with toilet paper last year when everybody was running low on that as well. Uh, Ryan, good to have you with us today. Um, we've got several more folks just steadily coming in. We're going to kind of give everybody just a few minutes to get here. And um, I can't wait to get into tonight's show. Look, now, if you, we're going to give Ed a, a good chance to go in and uh, talk a little bit about uh, what's going on with BNB. Uh, we're thankful for we've been able to nail him down. He's had four or five people like wanting to kind of pin him down, but he agreed to come on Barbecue Champs, and we appreciate that. And um, if you've got questions for Ed, uh, you can certainly give him some. Give you can make a comment. We'll take a look at it. There's some things that he can talk about. There's a few things that he may not be able to talk about. We'll let him decide that. But he's going to try to answer as many questions as he possibly can. We're just going to give folks a few more minutes to come in. And then once that happens, we're going to um, we're going to get into it. A lot of people cooking steaks this weekend, and I tell you what, I'm certainly proud of all the Barbecue Champs alumni. Got to give them all a shout out for doing such an amazing job. Uh, as always, from the bottom of my heart, I greatly appreciate everybody giving us a shout out uh, on the stage, giving us shout outs on their on their Facebook feed. Uh, it really means a lot to us. A lot of y'all have been doing it for so long. 
And I just keep worrying sometimes that may stop and a lot of the new people coming in may not even know about Barbecue Champs. So y'all are still doing it for us. And uh, I'm really, really appreciative of you doing that. We've also had a lot of success with our barbecue um, competitions. I've got to give a huge shout out to Ricky. Uh, he's known as Rick Mel on Facebook. He grand championed another competition this weekend. That's five grand champions, one reserve grand champion in his last seven competitions. He is absolutely on fire. My good buddy, Larry Dwayne Anderson, uh, cooked with him over in Center, Texas this weekend. He had a grand champion the week before and got reserve grand champion this past weekend. Both of these guys took Corey Mike's class, and Ricky also took a Lee Hickel's class. So they have been absolutely tearing it up. We've got others that have been doing uh, the same as well, and our barbecue classes have just been doing great. Uh, I really do appreciate all the barbecue folks giving us shout-outs as well. A lot of people just don't understand how good these classes are. And when you start seeing the success of people like Rick and Larry and so many others that are giving us shout-outs, uh, it definitely is game-changer. We've seen what it's doing for the uh, state cookers in this last year, and no question it's doing the same for the barbecue folks as well. Uh, Marissa Overson, there's the champ. How you doing, sweetie? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the birthday wishes. And uh, I know that you have been really bogged down in school. I talked to Matt earlier today, and I know you're just dying to get out and start cooking a lot. But I know you got a lot going on with school, and hopefully you're going to be able to get back out on that trail. And Miss Consistent's going to get out and show you what it's all about. Let's see who else we got. Got Joe here. Happy birthday, Bulldog Barbecue. Is so excited to be the newest member of Team BNB. &B. Can't wait to rep this weekend. Congratulations, Joe, on being part of an awesome team. Love B&B &B charcoal. I use it in all of my cooking at my barbecue competitions. I use the hickory lump. Once I get all my meats, I feed it a little bit of the char logs as well, uh, just for some heat, especially in the beginning to get it up. And then once I get all my meat wrapped, I'm pretty much well just using the char logs. They burn a long time, got good heat source, and um, I kind of roll with it that way. So absolutely uh, love it. Caitlin? Uh, Barbecue Champs Academy, 100%. I appreciate it. I appreciate your and Brandon's support along with many others. And uh, we, we really do thank you so much. We, we hope to have uh, our ancillary classes. We're going through them now. It is a mass amount of footage that we filmed. So we're hoping that these ancillary classes are going to be up here. I'm hoping in about two, maybe three weeks, probably three weeks two to three weeks. Let's, I'm pushing through them as fast as I can, and we have got some incredible recipes for our uh, ancillary classes. Desserts, wings, burgers, and appetizers is the four categories that we did, three of each one of those. So three burgers, three desserts, three appetizers, and three different flavored wings. So it's going to be great, unbelievable presentation. I think everybody's going to really like our new uh, cook that we're bringing in. Nick, good to have you here, buddy. It was great rolling with you this weekend. And yes, Rick is on a roll. Um, let's see. You didn't pay for Mark's class, did you? Nope. <laughs> Not exactly. So I actually got to meet Robbie Royal. Caleb, I tell you what, that's a nice guy right there. You just won't find anybody any nicer than um, uh, Robbie. He will do anything to help people. And he's just absolutely awesome. Well, speaking of the man, there he is right there, Mr. Rick. Buddy, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for the birthday wish. We was just talking about you. This man right here has been on absolute fire. He took Lee Hickel and Corey Mike's class. He started off on fire this year. Five grand champions, one reserve. He had three grand champions in a row. He missed one. I think he finished sixth overall. Had a reserve grand champion and two more grand champions after that. So five grands in a reserve his last seven competitions. Congratulations, Ricky. You are absolutely tearing it up, and we appreciate your support for Barbecue Champs Academy and giving us shout out. So um, let's see. Are we still doing the whole hog Memphis and May class? Yes, Scott, we are. We tried desperately to get that out before Memphis and May. But as everybody knows, back in April, Mark got uh, COVID. He was down for a couple weeks, not feeling very well. No way we could film him during that time. I was going to make a big push to see if perhaps we could push it out maybe this weekend to film it, try to turn that class around in a few days. 
it was just going to be too rushed and I just did not want to do that. So more than likely, we're probably going to wait uh, toward the fall and bring it out sometime maybe in September, October and bring it out. That way people have plenty of time to practice, do everything and get ready for the next year's Memphis in May. It was just a very bad, unfortunate deal with Mark getting sick. But, uh, you know, things happen out of our control and Mark's control. And uh, we're going to we're going to get that class out. Got Mr. David Gunnar Wilhelm. I tell you what, I appreciate everything you do. Absolutely love your knives. I, I've been I've been in love with that chef knife, David. Uh, I trimmed uh, my brisket, my ribs, chicken, everything with that eight inch chef knife. I can trim six briskets with that knife and it never loses an edge. I've never seen a knife stay so sharp in my life. Absolutely love it. If you are looking for a good knife, take a look at Gunnar Wilhelm. I've got the Lightning Pro Series. Absolutely phenomenal knives. I was trimming some briskets the other day. I had six of them to trim out for a uh, friend of mine and uh, never touched it with the rod or a stone or anything, and it just went right through them. I couldn't believe it. Full, full-blown trim. So, got another Shano Joe Rapolo in the house. Miss Shana, appreciate you being here. Another big BNB charcoal girl. And um, we're going to, uh, we're fixing to get to Ed in here. Before we do, I always want to give a shout-out uh, to our partners. We could not do this without you. Uh, Mr. Danny Helms at Be Ext uh, Extreme. Uh, barbecue, Mr. Ed, and all the folks at B&B &B Charcoal, we appreciate their support. Brian Crawford at Lone Star Barbecue Pro Shop and his Crawford Barbecue Pit Products. Papa Joe Grilling Supply in Hutto, Texas, and I think they are pretty loaded up, maybe still with some B&B. &B. They did get a shipment in, I think, here not too long ago. Uh, they'll let me know for sure as we get this thing rolling. Uh, so um, we appreciate them being aboard as well. Uh, Gunnar Wilhelm, Mr. David, thank you, sir, for your amazing, wicked, sharp knives. They're absolutely phenomenal. And uh, I went from the brand V to the brand G. GW, that is, and those things are absolutely phenomenal. We got TapiQ that's with us as well. If you're looking for InstaRe thermometer, uh, wireless, uh, probed as well, they are still working on the development of the new probe. It's a dual sensor probe that'll be very thin, like the tip of a thermopen for the SEA. It'll be able to stick it in the stake and read two readings uh, about two inches apart in that stake. I think that's going to be a game changer for everybody in the SEA world. Uh, Mr. Dustin at the barbecue store, we appreciate him uh, being with us as well. And the barbecue news magazine, Mr. Kale, uh, do a fantastic job. If you're wanting to know up-to-date stuff on all the happenings in SEA and barbecue, Take a look at the Barbecue News Magazine, and we appreciate all of those uh, fine folks and them um, uh, being partners with us. Yes, Peppa Joe Grilling Supply and Hutto, we are fully stocked on B&B products. So anyway, without further ado, let's bring in the man of the hour himself, the man, the myth, the legend, everybody wants to be like, Mr. Ed Riley. How you doing, brother? Mike, that was, that was too good. That was too much of an introduction. Thank hey, you, you know, what can I say? Everybody wants to be like Ed. So, anyway, Ed, I'll tell you what, buddy. Uh, you're a hard guy to nail down. I know you've been busy. I know y'all have had a lot of things going on. Uh, we've got a pretty captive audience here that's got some, I'm sure, maybe a few questions that will want to come about. Um, I know there are some things that you can talk about, a few things you may not be able to talk about. Um, but I think they've opened you up at least pretty much well to help us understand what's going on and the concerns people may have is the product changing what's going on are we going to be able to still get this uh I, it's a big change so why don't you tell us a little bit about it i'm going to open it up to you if you've got questions um give me just a few minutes to kind of let ed go through them and then uh, once that happens, we'll start firing away. We'll open up the comments. I don't want too many questions to come across and me miss something. So um, anyway, Ed, tell us, tell us what transpired when, uh, when uh, there was a takeover with B&B &B Charcoal. Oh, it's, it's, it's exciting times. As, as, as all of us know that barbecue is exploding now. Um, people are spending so much time at home with the COVID restrictions, with the restaurants closing, People spending, I mean, the, the, the idea that you have more time to cook outside for your family, for your friends, that's just a great, great time to be. And I, we've talked about this before that 
I'd rather be in a neighborhood that everybody's cooking out side than in a neighborhood that everybody's watching CNN or Fox News. So it's it's right. a great time to be in barbecue. Everybody that's in barbecue knows this is no nobody could plan for this to happen. If it was, and I'd have five warehouses of product available, but it, it, it's just it's 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 um it's a good time to be in barbecue. So I love barbecue. I love outdoor cooking, and I always want to promote any type of outdoor cooking that that people can get involved in. Um, I've been involved with a B and B for about two and a half years. It's been a great ride. Um, and I'm going to jump around a little bit here, but because um, I thought we were going to talk about something, I thought we were going to talk about post oak. But we'll mm -hmm. start right with right with the acquisition. So March third, uh, Duraflame acquired B and B Charcoal. Duraflame is a is an old old company. Duraflame started in 1917. Um, in my understanding, they started as uh, Cedar Cal, and Cedar Cal was a um, was a pencil manufacturer, and they developed a way to make pencils 50 at a time. Prior to that, Cedar Cal, um, they were they're making pencils one at a time. So at 50 pencils at a time, they were able to corner the pencil market for the world. They were the world's largest leader of pencils, in my understanding, if I read their history correctly. Um, at that point, though, they, they had lots of scrap wood left over. So they created the Duraflame log. Duraflame log sold well in the wintertime, not so much in the summertime. So they partnered with Cowboy Charcoal. You fast forward. Uh, through the 1930s, 40s, 50s, uh, 19, I think 70s or 80s, if I if I remember correctly, they had, they started partnering with Cowboy Charcoal out of, out of Kentucky. Um, the idea is that you would sell the Duraflame logs in the winter and then the Cowboy Charcoal in the summer, so it was counter seasonal. Uh, that went on for a few years until Duraflame eventually bought Cowboy Charcoal. Cowboy Charcoal is still located in Kentucky, so it, it was one family company buying another family company. Um, that, that eventually led to the acquisition, I think it was 2016, of uh, Western Wood. That's in Ennis, Texas, still located in Ennis, Texas. So what Duraflame does is it's a, it's, a, it's a way to, it's not a cooperative, but it's a family businesses acquiring other family businesses to, you know, to, to, to able to combat some of the larger companies out there. The larger ones would be things like Royal Oak or Kingsford, multi-million, billion dollar corporations. Um, our acquisition happened March 3rd. Um, I, I believe it's going to be a great time for us because again, Duraflame is a larger company. They were able to provide more resources for, uh, for BNB. Um, we're really kind of a small company. It was a dozen so people working there. Uh, if, if you had anything to do with sales, you could talk to Papa Joe or, or, or to, uh, Brian over there, Lone Star You're talking to me. There was one person for sales for the world, basically. Now we have a lot more resources. We're going to have a lot more resources in distribution, a lot more resources in uh, acquisition of uh, everything from bags to, to shipping. So I think it's going to be a great thing for us. Um, a lot of people were concerned about the formula. Nothing changes with the formula. Uh, b and was bought at a premium. Um, just like if you go out and buy a nice watch or a nice car, you're not going to go home and tear it apart. b and is going to stay... You know, with our formula, it's gonna it's it's a hundred percent oak char with the briquettes, with the char logs, different things like that. Have have um, you know, our methodology is gonna stay the same. They haven't changed anything with that. So, okay. um, my my mandate is business as usual. So, uh, the only thing, only difference is now we have more buying more power. So more we buying power, more resources. More resources, exactly. Okay, all right. So, so that's kind of the upshot of it. I mean, again, it's an exciting time. Um, you mentioned something too that was critical was the um, was the hoarding. I, I, I call it the hoarding. But when somebody goes and they find the BNB product, they don't buy one or two items. They're buying 10, 12 of, of the briquettes or whatever they find. We um, our capacity is up forty percent. We made ten million more pounds of charcoal in two thousand twenty over two thousand nineteen. Wow! It's all sold. Our uh, demand is up sixty percent. So it's uh, you can imagine that's creating empty shelves in a lot of places. However, right. we've put it, you and I discussed earlier that we've got a new briquetter in, it can do up to 20,000 briquettes a day. Now, so what's a, what is a briquetter? It's a machine that makes briquettes. It's, it's okay. so simple. Our briquettes are made from our oak char. So we take our oak char, we don't mix it. It's not a mix of hardwood. So it's an oak char from our, um, from our, oak, from our lump oak charcoal. So we take our oak lump charcoal, 
the fines, the smaller fines is what makes a briquettes. And that's okay. the big difference. Um, when you burn our briquette versus um, some of the national brands, you get 2% ash. And I think uh, I'm a, we're not talking about names, but some of the other right. national brands, you get up to 40% ash from it. So right, you're right. going to find a lot less uh, waste with our product because it's 100% oak char. Right. Okay. So the new briquette, briquetter, is that what you called it? A briquetter. I, a briquetter. I okay. So name, is, is a, that a, going a, to, well, that eventually, y'all just got it. Is that going to help with the production to produce more? Absolutely. So, okay. And we are producing more. So we, like I said, we, we made over 40% more in 2020 and we're right. looking to make 40% more in 2021. Um, wow. Just catching up with the demand right now is, is, is our challenge. Typically in uh, December and January, it's really slow months. Our January had as much demand as a normal April would in like prior pandemic. Wow. Wow. You know, I, I, it's a lot. You think about it, and I know a lot of people sometimes are getting frustrated. I never want to leave a good product and try something else. And I, I'm going to encourage all of our listeners to stick it out. You know, yes, I know it's here. Here's one. You know, it's it's almost impossible to find locally. Uh, the briquettes, it's, it's, right. It's, it's, the briquettes are getting pretty hard to find. Um, but, you know, we all said the same thing back in April and May and June when we couldn't find no toilet paper. So, You're right. Toilet paper you know, was hard I to mean, find. I still have a box matter. that I bought, 96 Yeah, it, it didn't matter what you did. Every time I'd go to the store, nothing. I'd go to the store, nothing. I'd go to the store, nothing. You know, and then people would buy it and then buy stinking. I'd look, a lady's coming out there with 400 rolls of toilet paper, and I'm like, man alive you know but it didn't mean that i quit using toilet paper you just have to you have to search around you have to find it you have to look around and and i'm sure uh, there is places i know that you can go obviously papa joe hutto uh papa joe grilling supply in hutto texas bnb rocks they're only half hour and halfway for us to pick up they've they've got a pretty good supply of it uh, i know that i ordered some probably two months ago from Ace Hardware. I just went to acehardware.com. I picked out what I wanted. There was an Ace Hardware store about 40 miles from the house. I had it drop shipped to that store and I went over there and picked it up and they had it all on a uh, pallet and I picked up, I don't know, like eight or 10 bags of char logs. I think I picked up 10 or 12 bags of lump. I think I picked up five or six bags of the, of the, the uh, orange bags. And, That's a great uh, point. So Ace Hardware is our, probably our largest national distribution of it. We still have things like Cal Ranch. We have Murdoch's. We have uh, Rule King. They have a variety of our products. Lowe's is carrying some of ours. Academy, is, of course, is a, is a retail partner of ours. It's been around for a while. But I think that what's special about Ace is you can go to Ace, their main website, acehardware.com. You yep. can order your product from <laughs> acehardware.com, and they will bring it and deliver it to your local Ace at no charge. So that, right. and, and I think there's 4,500 A stores across the U.S. So there's probably, they say there's an A store within 20 miles of 90% of the population out there. So that's right. the best way to do it currently. Right. Yeah. You know, you think about that. If you don't have something that's in your area, guys, a lot of times you might be able to say you're going to a competition and you live in, I don't know, some rural area in Oklahoma, there's no Ace hardware, but you're going to a uh, you're going to be going to a competition that's, I don't know, say in Arkansas, and you see that you're going to pass an Ace Hardware on the way. If you were to plan it, you know, a couple weeks in advance, they can get the product there and just have it drop shipped and tell them, hey, I'm coming in from town. I need to pick this up when I come rolling through town. And they'll have it. They'll hold it for you because it's got your name on it. At least that's what they did on mine. Most and, aces uh, get their shipment uh, once or twice a week. So, yeah, you're right. You don't even have to – I, I don't want to say two weeks out. If you order it no, out, they could have it at that it, A store. If you're five, flying in, we had some people come into Savannah. They flew into Savannah and were able to pick up their product in Savannah so they didn't have to tote their uh, bags yeah. in with them. That was uh, Dan Lane out of Boston. He flew to Savannah. Um, I forgot to check how he did, but he was able to pick up a couple of bags at A store down there in Savannah. Yeah. So Mark Lambert says he's got it. So there you uh, go. Mark Lambert. Yeah. Yep. Sweet yep. swine of mine. Sweet swine of mine. That's SSOMD.com. Sweet swine of mine distributing. SSOMD.com. Mark Lambert's got it. He can ship it out. Uh, I know the barbecue or um, uh, Papa Joe Hutto or Papa Joe Grilling Supply in Hutto, Texas. They said they've got it. Uh, I know the supply chain's been a little tight. 
But here's the good thing. This is this is what I really wanted to, to, to know, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners did, Ed, was the fact that um, nothing's changed in the formula. No. Uh, every, every, right. Everything's the same. Nothing has changed in the formula. And well, it seem, seems like to me, you're with a bigger company, more resources, more people. I think he was telling me there was only 12 people that runs BNB Charcoal. I've, prior I've to not this. even met all of them. There is a very, it, it's not a very big company at all. Um, it's, it's, BNB is, is definitely, it's a David versus Goliath thing. Um, and the Goliath being the Kingsford and the Royal Oaks out there. Uh, we've just got a great product. It's, it's, it's a classic American tale. You build a better mousetrap and you catch more mice. Um, our product is 100% oak char. We put a little bit of a, uh, you know, cornstarch binder in it, but it, it, it performs differently. And a lot of people who, and that's something else. Let me see if I get a briquette here that I can show you guys. A lot of people don't realize the difference between the BNB briquettes. I don't know if you can see that BNB briquette. It's yeah, a thick big. briquette. And yeah. I've got the competition here. Hold on. Yeah, I, I had some Kingsford left over from gosh a long time ago. I'm not ago. saying any words here, but yeah, you don't you don't have to. I'll say it for you. It's just night and day different. Yeah, I mean, and the I thickness of them, it's just so much smaller. And uh, yeah, look at that, and even even the thickness of it. So, um, so it you just, can tell, and it's 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 a it's a tighter, it's a heavier, it's a heavier mm -hmm. uh, briquette. It's denser. Um, yep. One of the things that we do a lot is we use a, an old school technology. When we make our charcoal, when like again, we start with our lump charcoal. Um, it's made in earthen kilns. An earthen kiln is clay lined. It's much very similar to like a Kamado grill. If you cook a, a pork brisket or I mean pork, a pulled pork butt or a brisket in your oven, it's gonna perform. It's gonna come out different than it would in Kamado grill. Ours are done in a clay lined earthen oven, so there's more moisture. There's more cellulose membranes left inside of that that gives it that density and it also gives it uh, a specific species flavor and btu that's involved with it um there's no we don't put any limestone we don't put any cold char there's no borax there's none of these uh, minerals or chemicals that are in our in, in our briquette and that's going to give you a better burn there's people who cook with steak it's almost like the olympics it's 0. 0.0001 percent difference between a thousand dollar steak or a ten thousand dollar steak and you know 21st place so they need very specific smoke profiles and btus and that's what you get with our profile especially with our briquettes uh, wow. our lump is different too um we produce that different than most most other lump programs they have a stainless steel retort that that almost 99.9 percent .9 carbonizes their lump so their lump comes out I can't bring it out to you, but I mean these these are these examples of our lump, right? Right. You still see a lot of the a lot of the a lot of the um, bark and wood bark, and stuff. Not the bark, but part of the part of the rings of the tree on it right. versus the competition. This has got it's almost a hundred percent, and and if you listen to these, it's got a higher ting sound to it. It's going to fall apart right. quicker than ours. Right. That means you got more stuff in it. That that density right. is what you want when you're cooking because that gives you a smoke profile right. i often look at it your charcoal as an ingredient it's the third ingredient it's the last flavor you put on your food because mm -hmm. those particulates float off your charcoal and land on your food and they're absorbed into your food if you have a junky charcoal it's going to either leave you no results or it's going to leave you bad results on your food yep. ours yep. actually transforms the taste the color and the texture of your food so it's important yep. to know what's in your charcoal because that ends up on your food that you actually consume. Yep. Mark Lambert doing his class. He said, you know, smoke is another ingredient that goes on your meat. And uh, what you burn is can directly affect the flavor profile of what you're cooking. And, Absolutely uh, true. Take it from a six-time world champion. When he tells you <laughs> that, you can take it to the bank. Uh, he will know, and I know he burns B and B. So, all right, we got a question here, and, and uh, Ron or Rob, uh, excuse me, Rob uh, Nakia White. He actually knows quite a bit about uh, B and B. I think he actually works with these guys as well. Do char logs burn hotter? What's the difference between the briquette and the logs? Nakia kind of explained it. Yes, they do burn hotter. They're made char logs are made from the same material as the briquettes. I think it has the perfect marriage between lump and briquettes. Hot due to the hole. There's a hole through the center. Longevity due to the compression. Are they are they pretty much well? Is that 
pretty much well answer it? It's made from the same material as the briquettes? No, so close enough. So the briquettes are made from an oak char, right? Right. The char logs are made from our oak char and a hickory char. So we combine okay. the two chars and and the char the char that's left over from the briquette is what we make the the um, the char logs oh, from. Now, this is a patented okay. product. Now right. it's extruded versus press. This is press because right. you see the line in there. It's right. a double press, what gives it a lot more density. This is extruded. So it's forced through a tube. Right. If I can get this correct. If it's yep. forced through a tube and we put the air hole in it. Now right. it's a patented design, um, meaning that it's a cylinder. And right. it's three times as heavy as a briquette. So this yep. will burn. And, and, wow. and um, Kel, I think, did this one time with the Barbecue News. Stacked a, I guess it was um, it was a hunt sinker. Forgive me if I'm son, but it was a barrel smoker. And it burned for 48 hours at cooking temperature at 220 degrees. Yeah, so, it's, it's, that's what I use. When, like it's I a said, lot hotter and it lasts a lot longer because it's a lot denser. Yeah, I use it, like I said, once I get on my, I, I'll put a little bit in when I first start start up my smoker, and I've got a big rotisserie smoker. I lay a bed of that down, probably 10 pieces. I put my lump charcoal on top of it, and then I put one little chunk of wood, fist size, that's my smoke. And I usually do that at the beginning, kind of gets my heat up in the smoker, gets it up faster. Maybe a couple times during the smoke, I may add one or two pieces, and then once I get all my meat wrapped, I'm just 100% using the char logs and it's a great combination. So that's so. a great point, Mike. A lot of people will do that. They'll, they'll, I know Mark, I've seen him do this. One of the, it was a couple of years ago in Las Vegas when he was doing something for the, uh, uh, the hardware show, he had loaded up his old hickory smoker with the char log. And then he put some lump on top. And then on top of the lump, he actually put some chunks, right? So he yep. had, yep. That's how I do it. Free smoke flavor profile. So the char yep. log give you one, the lump yeah. gives you another flip out, and then the, the chunks give you another. I thought we were going to babysit that thing all night in the parking lot. He's like, nope, it's time to go. I'm like, what? He's like, that will burn all night, and it will give you the right smoke profile. Um, when people use rubs or spices, they layer that on there. They'll start with a mustard base. They'll put a, a sweet and the, or maybe a spicy, and then they'll put a sweet uh, layer of right. uh, seasoning on top of that. You could do the same thing with your, with your smoke. Would, you could layer yeah. your smoke profile. Yep. And that's what a lot of pros do. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. It's a good way to do it. Uh, let's see. My Ace Hardware has been out on back order since December. Yeah, Ryan, a lot of times they may not have it. but And the, and the Ace Hardware that I have locally that's about 30 miles, 35, 40 miles from me, they didn't have it. But what I did is I did go to Ace, I bought it, and I had it shipped there. So that's... Now, I don't know if that works in all parts of the country. I live in Louisiana. It did work for me there. Uh, Randy, my Ace Hardware does not have it and says it's not available. Uh, once again, so Randy. Let me speak I, to that for a second. Ace is one of our largest distributors. We fill anywhere from 8 to 10 trucks a week for Ace. Um, we don't handle distribution. Ace ships. They, they put their trucks at our factory, and they pick it up directly from us. Um, we don't handle where they take it. Ace has got, I think, 17 different uh, warehouses that they bring it to, and then the co-ops bring it out of the warehouse. Um, if your Ace store doesn't have it, I would tell them to get with their store manager, to get with their warehouse manager to start bringing it in because we are making, as I mentioned, 40% more charcoal than we did in 2019 than we did in 2020, and we're going to make about 40% more in 2021. That's wow. 10 million more pounds of charcoal. That's tons and tons and tons of charcoal. We're wow. making it. We don't ship it. That's up to the A stores to bring it in. And it has a lot to do with demand. Customer demand goes a long way. If your customers start talking to Ace corporate and say, we want our product, I think that can help a lot of dictating where they ship it to. Right. Let's say Bucky's. Does Bucky's carry it? Bucky's comes in clutch always. Bucky's, uh, Bucky's has a. Yes, they do. So Bucky's yeah. and Academy are both Texas based and Bucky's I've been I went to like three Bucky's in the past two weeks and they don't have the briquettes, but they do have a lot of our other uh, they have our lump, they have our uh, I saw the Texas um, extra large and I believe I saw the Cookwoods in the Bucky's too. So if okay. you got a Bucky's near you, try them. Okay. Yep. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Robbie Roll B and B. 
helped me score the highest overall score in GBA history 10 days ago. There you go. I told, I told Royal, him. Robbie Royal, you're I the told, man. I told him that here the other day or when we was on the show. He was like, he cooked in Georgia and I didn't know about it. And I was like, I yeah. I should have been there, Robbie. I apologize. I saw you at the shed and we should have. I, I didn't know what, what kind of – I mean, Georgia only has a few GBA sanctioned events. And that's what's really cool about barbecue. It is very regional. Um, different places you go, we're going to cook barbecue differently. Uh, and, and that's why we make over 60 different types of um, products in B&B. We've got – you see behind me, we've got the – well, this is the uh, this is the Texas Extra Large. That's Chibacha wood. we got mesquite. These are Royal Oaks, cherry. you got our B&B championship blends. Different places around the country are going to cook barbecue differently. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the great part about it. The last thing you want is to have the same barbecue taste profile in Miami as you do Maine, as you do in Portland, Oregon. It right. needs to be different in different places you go. And b, b offers a lot of different woods to help create that regional you know, distinction that you're looking for right. when you're cooking barbecue. Right, right. Well, I know Texas is, especially when you get down southwest texas and stuff they're more of mesquite you know they love mesquite i don't mesquite cook with mesquite. jerry yeah i don't cook with mesquite so but it's, you, it's, you, it's you, a, you better you have it mesquite, don't use mesquite i mean mesquite's got a heavy heavy taste to it no doubt about it but if you use mesquite lump like this one right here a yellow bag or mesquite lump right. won't give you that heavy Heavy taste smoke. that that's that that you get from your chunks a lot of that makes sense south texas areas will use a mesquite lump and they'll use a cherry chunk to finish it off with the cherry chunk gives you that sweet profile especially after you put your sauce on there and it starts tacking up at the end you put the cherry wood on there and that cherry flavor will do two things they call it the lipstick because it'll give it a red flavor to your briskets and a sweet profile right. um and again, don't be scared to use the mesquite lump because the mesquite lump doesn't have the same lanikins and things that the that the regular chunks do. Um, and, and it does give you a very – it's a spicy flavor um, that, that transitions perfectly into our post oak discussion. Post, I got you. Post oak. Where's my post oak? Post oak is um, – and I, I, and I did an article recently. I think I sent it to you guys about the post oak. It's been right. a long time. But post oak is um, – it is a species of tree, but prior to it being categorized as a species of tree, it was a type of tree that was known in the the I would I would say the cattle ranchers area of Texas as a type of wood they used to make fence posts. It's right. a very hardy wood and very moisture resistant, and a lot of farmers or ranchers would use this type of post oak to make their fence posts. That's where you get the name post oak. There's about three or four species of oak that share the name post oak to it. But what it is, it's a straight, very durable oak that after the ranchers made their fence post, they, of course, use it in their campfires. It's a spicier blend, and you won't be able to see this, but it's got a red a red hue in the middle of it, right? That's right. probably not the best thing to it. But that red hue in the middle, that it's kind of like a red and white oak mixture. That gives you that spicy flavor plus the high BTUs that the oak gives you. Nobody else makes more post oak than B&B. &B. And right now, Texas is kind of the epicenter of barbecue, and post oak is the, is a preference of wood that people have in Texas. So if yeah. you want that Texas flavor, we have five different products that have post oak in it, which would be our post oak chips, chunks, our post oak, and we have some post oak blend in our, in our b and competition logs, as well as our, uh, our briquettes contain 100% post oak in it. Okay, so that's good to know. That's real good to know. Um couple other questions. Any news on Academy Sports carrying the briquettes no longer on their website? I can't talk. I don't know so much about it. I know we still sell Academy. That's been one of our oldest retail partners. Um, I think it has to do a lot with their, uh, their, their, their order management system. Uh, we, still sell, we still sell Academy. I was in about five Academies this past week, and you're right. The shelves are bare. Um, I don't know what to say about it. That's I, I would just talk to your academy manager and see if they can specifically bring in the briquettes. They like they bring in a lot of our product. Uh -huh. um, I think they do their ordering based on on hand inventory. They don't. I don't know if they do specifically like we need briquettes. Let's bring briquettes in. They wait till they get to a certain point before they order again. Right. I think if you talk to your academy uh, store manager and say, we, you know, we really want the briquettes in here. I think. That can help a lot. That that goes 
consumer demands go a lot more than as, as you know when i talk to the buyer merchants they can only do so much but if consumer says this is what i want they'll they'll listen to the consumer a lot more than they'll listen to me yeah so nakia just said i see it on academy sports website right now maybe it was a glitch i seen it on there the other day because a lot of times i got a academy about five miles from my house and i'll go on there just to check the store inventory and if i'll say hey they got some in instead of me having to run up there all the time they're usually pretty good about updating their website i'll just check it i see some i'll go up there i'll I'll pick up four or five bags. I don't. I don't wipe them out. That's the thing. I think if everybody keeps wiping them out, okay. Supplies, that, I have heard stories of that where somebody they they know when that it, when the order comes in and they'll go and buy the whole pallet. Yeah, and, and that that leaves nothing on the floor for anybody else. So yeah, I, I mean that's perhaps a conversation somebody needs to have with Academy to say maybe a two bag limit or something. Yeah, because um, you know if Academy gets an order in once a week and somebody goes in and buys all. The whole inventory, it yeah. leaves nothing for anybody else. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of that's probably happening. We I have saw, heard it happening, yes. We saw it happen with toilet paper, so it's no different. Uh, let's see. I asked the Ace Hardware and Texture Canada to carry it for my friend that lives there. They ordered it Saturday and had it in a few bags today. There you go. Good. There that's that's go. the best way to do it. Thank you, Shauna. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, here's a good question. Does B&B make their own pellets, or do you partner with another manufacturer? And also, I think you have talked to me about this. Tell us how you make the pellets and if they're made from real wood or if it's made with a bunch of filler. So we don't have a pellet we don't have a pelletizing machine in our factory. All right. So what we do is we we sell our products. Um, I'm sorry, somebody else packages ours and it's a uh, candy weaver out of um, out of Arkansas. She uses our recipe just much like if you had a private label for whether it was a beer or whatever you made. They would make it specifically to your recipe. Uh, my understanding, and I, I haven't been there in a while, but my understanding is that they use our wood scraps. So we start making our logs, then we make our chunks, then we make our chips. And then from our chips, I, I believe, you can see that? Yep. It's what we make our, um, it's part of the recipe that we make our pellets out of. We don't use alder in our on our pellets. Our pellets are made out of, if it says hickory, it's 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 we mix it it's with a hickory. hickory and oak. If it's apple, it's a mixture of apple and oak. The oak gives you the BTU because the apple alone won't give you the heat that you need. Um, you mean the oak gives it the BTU, the apple gives you the flavor. That's right. Okay. Um, a lot of other okay. companies use a lot of alder wood. No, alder BTU. is the number one wood that people use in bed frames and furniture. Um, soft. That's soft. Soft, soft and well, no heat. It's old. And, uh, it, 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 and, and those same companies have been sued for adding flavor oils. Uh, the reason why they add flavor oils is because they don't have the wood. We do have the wood. If, if when we get done with our cherry, the scraps from our cherry can be made into cherry pellets, right? Okay. So that is, um, well, that falls down. That's so we don't have our pellet machines, but we do control the recipe. The recipes are based on our specific requirements, and that's why our pellets will burn a little hotter, they'll burn longer, and they'll have more authentic wood flavor in them because we control the recipe in that. So that's a great question. Um, a lot of other people, like I said, have issues with their pellets, especially if they use a lot of binders because ours have a lot of more wood. Uh, the lanikins are still left in the wood when we process it, so don't have to use a lot of binders. If you use a lot of binders, that absorbs a lot of moisture. Even in a moist, uh, like, you know, if it, not even if it rains, just in the morning with the morning dew, if you leave the pellets in your, uh, in your, in your, in your, uh, in your hopper, in, smoker, the hopper. in your hopper, they right. can expand with the moisture that's in and the, in clog the, in the auger, and the clog the auger up. That's right. Yes, you got to be, ours won't careful. expand as much because we don't use as much binder. Well, there you go. You know, I, I've, I've got a big, huge FEC 500 pellet smoker, and I had cooked on it, oh goodness, for a wedding for a friend of mine. And um, I usually, as soon as I come back, first thing I do, I take the shop vac, I vacuum all the pellets out, uh, clean out the pods and everything. And I put it, I came in, I was tired, I put it in the in the uh, shop, and it stays right. inside. It's got, got, got a big shop that it's in. And about five months later, a friend of my future son-in-law was like, Hey, I, I need to cook up a bunch of briskets, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, let's, let's roll this thing out. I rolled out. I was like, Oh man, I forgot to, I was like, I hope this thing's working, you know, and I turned that thing on and 
they didn't swell up, I was worried to death. I've heard horror stories that they get moisture in some of them, they swell up, and it's like cement. You got to practically beat that stuff out. So I, I've actually had a. I mean, because this is goes goes back away. Yeah, they they seize up, and it's like you got to get like a chisel to pull them yeah, out of there. Yeah, and that kills your auger system. If you plug it in, you'll burn your auger motor out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I got a question for you. You was talking about not putting um, the pellets in your leaving the pellets in your hopper. Now, here's something that a lot of people. I've often wondered, and maybe barbecue and steak competition. So a lot of times I'm getting all my stuff done in my smoker. Uh, Friday, I usually, I'm putting my char logs down. I'm putting my lump down. I've got everything ready. So at 3 o'clock in the morning, I can fire up my smoker, get it ready, and put my brisket on. But a lot of times I want to do that on my kettle or my 22-inch WSM with the briquettes. And a lot of times I'm scared to put the briquettes in there because it may be pretty humid and stuff like that. And I'm like, will it affect them? So I know you, I know that you just said pellet sometimes with a lot of moisture, it could. Does it hurt to take a briquette out of a bag and put it in your grill or your smoker, say the day before, even if it's going to be a little humid outside? Would you recommend not doing that? Or have you seen, it, now, it, may, not do, it may not do nothing. I, I'm just wondering. Good question. So at the shed this past, uh, what was it in the, the, the couple weeks they ago. had in the shed? Yeah, they had a flood. Rain. Right. They a lot of people's bags got flooded. They opened their bags and were still able to use their briquettes. And I think it has a lot to do with the density of our briquettes because our briquettes, again, this is eh. it's hard. It's dense, and the wood, the uh, the the the, the All right, moisture so, can't smoke. Again, this is. It. Yep. Right. This is our briquette versus the competition. Hold right. On. If the competition is using a lot of binder, right? Right. Briquette right here. Yeah. The B and I don't know what that other you're, case you're stands good. for. Yeah. But if this briquette has a lot, and I'm just you, you get next time somebody goes to the store, just buy a small bag and just feel the lightness of the smaller briquette versus mine. The right. density of the briquette has to have some sort of moisture repellent to it. Now, no, they're not waterproof at all, but I mean, I can give you specific, I mean, I can show you pictures of people's bags and they picked it up and because of the flood, the bags, because they're, they're, they're you know, the paper bags, the paper right. bags disintegrated, but they were still be able to use our briquettes. Okay. It is a denser briquette. I think the density just normally, if you think about it, will hold more moisture out than something that's made with a lot of binders Right, um, and more porous. The more porous it is, it's going to absorb more. Yes, yeah. you can see the, the density yeah. of the binder there. So that's yeah. this is our briquette versus the competition. This I is the most you. popular one out there. So, so you, it's probably not going to hurt anything. It's not like it's sitting out in the rain. It's just it's sitting in my grill with the lid on it. And it's you're probably right. It probably doesn't hurt a thing. So, but I thought I'd bring it. Now up. you got to store your briquettes in airtight containers or in moisture, or, you know, more of an environmental control thing. I think that's gonna they're gonna light better, faster, right? And give you more BTUs. But I do think that just I mean, just again, the weight of them. If you if you get a a charcoal chimney and you put a charcoal chimney full of my briquettes versus the same charcoal chimney of my competitions, mine's gonna weigh. 10 to 15 percent more oh yeah that density absolutely. is going to hold that moisture out more again yeah. it's not recommended you don't want your char cobra kids to get wet but i do think that helps it a lot especially right. in moist environments in the spring uh when you do get some moist morning with a dews heavy right that's true are char logs good to use in a big green egg yeah yes um you and, and probably with the egg you don't need as many and i would right. use um again a combination of the char logs Maybe some lump charcoal on top of it. The right. lump charcoal is going to give you a little bit of your smoke profile. Again, so this is going to give you your heat, right? So you want your heat source. Right. You've got a little more smoke source with this, but then depending on what you're cooking, you're going to want some flavor with your chunks. Right. Uh, briskets, obviously, you want to use some post oak. Maybe use some hickory with your pork. Uh, and then finish with some chips. You can throw some chips at the very end to get that sweeter flavor. Apple or cherry or maple chips at the end, depending on what you're cooking. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, I appreciate answering all of these things. Let's see. I use pellet from Ancillaries. I uh, can't wait to try the BNB. Brandon, I'll tell you right now, it's the best pellet out there. It, it, I've tried several different brands. BNB pellets to me is the best flavor of any of them. And 
incredibly good smoke, and that's one of the things uh, that I love. Let's see, I've tried a ton of pellets. I get a longer burn on BNB, and it seems to make less ash. Yep, I, I agree with because all they of burn those. longer. And the three elements that I think BNB really prides himself on is it burns hotter, it burns longer. There's less ash. Okay, there's four, and there's more authentic smoke flavor on it because uh, we deliver more authentic. I mean, BNB doesn't own any forest. A lot of these other uh, larger companies own millions and millions of acres of, of forest timber. And when they harvest their forest, they're going to use the wood that's available. We're, we source our wood from private farmers. When they bring the wood to us, we moisture test it. If, it, if it's too old or too green, we won't take it. So we right. start with premium wood. And when you start with the best ingredients, just like if you go to cook something uh, on your grill, you don't start with the cheapest ingredients you, you could find. You don't go to the butcher and say, let me buy the cheapest steak I can find. You want to buy premium products. We start with the premium product. And if you think of your charcoal as an ingredient, that's where you want to start. to. to that's the distinction that you want to have with, um, with our product versus some of the other products. It's not a commodity. You're not buying right. mine because it's the cheapest. You're buying mine because it's a premium product. But right. it's not crazy expensive like some of the other ones out there. No, and it burns longer. You know, you, brand K versus brand B and B, <laughs> there's no different. I mean, I can put a chimney full in my kettle and it's gone. Uh, probably a good 45 minutes to an hour with the same amount of B and B running under the same conditions. It's a harder, bigger, hotter burning uh, briquette, and I don't have to run my pit. I don't have to run my grate open at the bottom. So if you're saying that it may cost a little bit more, but in the long run, it really doesn't because I don't have to run my, my damper on the bottom as open as much to get the same heat. And therefore my food cooks faster. And then when I get done, I can close it off, choke it down, knock that off, knock the ash off those coals. And I can use those coals again. If I oh, want Mike, to. How many times so, have you, have you've cooked, especially like with steak, you'll cook your steak and you close it down the next morning. I mean, it's, 24 yeah. hours later, you still have briquettes left over. So yeah. oh, you yeah. can get a second run off our briquettes. They don't burn all the way through. A lot of briquettes have sodium nitrates in them, and they will continue to burn until they're they're all gone, basically. Yeah. Mine, yeah. we don't add any accelerants. There's no petroleum products in mine. So when you choke the, uh, the air off, like you're talking about, you'll have product left over for the next yep. time. Yeah, and you will not with brand K. I'll say that. How about that? You just won't. I mean, they, they're so small, they burn up so fast. So, so really it's not cheaper. It's, it's, uh, or it's not more expensive because I can get two burns just about for I, 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 a chimney and a, and a quarter will burn about the same as two full chimneys of Kingsford. And I'll that's a, that's a great up. point too, because it, 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 in your whether your competition or backyard, the last thing you want to do is add more charcoal to your to your food. You want that's it. You, you want to cook it the entire time because when you add more charcoal, there's that there's 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 a fluctuation in heat and a fluctuation in flavor. Because when you ignite charcoal, there is a little bit of smoke that comes off of it. It's not the best tasting smoke that comes yeah. off of it. Um, yeah. we, we, you 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 want obviously that thin blue smoke coming off your charcoal, and if you get that for you know the, the duration of your cook. I think you're ahead of the game on that. You're ahead of the game. Absolutely. Let's see. BNB Championship blend pellets are the best. Yep. Nathan, I like those. I love the hickory. Uh, I really like that hickory. It just gives it a little bit more smoky flavor, especially when you're on uh, a pellet cooker. I want, a, I want a little bit more smoke and I can get that uh, with it. BNB is the Gunner Wilhelm of charcoal. <laughs> best in the market. Yeah, I'll agree. Thanks, best, best knives that I've seen. Gunner Wilhelm. Uh, best charcoal by far, B and B. Look, so you know, one Ed, of the things that somebody ahead. mentions about pellets. One of the things I'd like to to bring up. We don't, I don't, I don't have it out here, but a lot of pellet smoke is pure is pure wood smell, which is great. But then you miss that charcoal taste at the end. We make a Jack Daniel's charcoal pellet. A charcoal yes. pellet is is reclaimed from the from the oak char that the Jack Daniel's makes their whiskey out of. And we're able to pelletize that charcoal taste, uh, so you can have that charcoal taste with your with pellet uh, taste. I put about a cup of the Jack Daniels per pound of my um, of, um, of my pellets. pellets. I like okay. to use a lot of the championship blend pellets, but sometimes I use the hickory. Sometimes, if I'm doing a like a brisket, I'll use the post oak. But I'll right. put a a cup of that uh, of that Jack Daniels in there 
gives it that charcoal taste and a little bit of what the Cajuns would call a log knob, a little bit extra. Happen like a Jack Daniels, so it adds that taste to it. But it, it's 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 perceivable to me, but not a lot of people. But what's more perceivable is that charcoal taste. So having a charcoal pellet to add to your pellet profile, I think that's key to all those charcoal cookers out there. Right. Well, you know, Ed, I, I appreciate you coming on. I mean, Nathan, B&B is just hard to find in my area. Nathan, it's hard to find everywhere. I mean, you know. You Nathan, still, we, are, we are working tirelessly, and that's one of the great things about our partnership or our, our acquisition with Duraflame right now is they have the resources. Um, we're slowly working this together so we can bring this out uh, to roll it out more nationally. Uh, but B&B is, is really, it was a mom and pop operation. Partnering with Duraflame, I think, just opens up a lot more resources, both with the shipping and the buying power. I hope to have more B&B product in your neighborhood very quickly. Yeah, I, that was the, my next question. I mean, you got to understand, the pandemic hit, it put a bottleneck on, on everybody. The first thing is, is everybody stayed home and started grilling. And the charcoal supply, just nobody could keep up. Um, especially a smaller company and it's making a quality product like B and B. Yeah, that's that's just part of the game. But you know, here's the thing: this we be patient with them. They they've been brought out by a much larger company. I think B and B only had twelve people that worked at the whole place. It wasn't many. I I, yeah. I probably only knew about five people who right. worked at B and B. So if that's the case, now you got Duraflame in here that's going to probably have several hundred people. The resources seven hundred. Yeah. yeah, so the resources are going to get a whole lot better, and you know, it's just they it just happened, and I know everybody's getting impatient and they want it. It's a month ago, but exactly, I, yeah, they they wanted it, yeah, a month ago. But it's just you know, if everybody keeps hoarding it, if everybody buys everything that comes out at one time, and that's what's happening. It happened with toilet paper. It happened with paper towels. <laughs> Heck, it happened with a lot of dead gum meat products in certain areas. So yes. it's no different than this. And there's so many more people staying at home grilling. None of that's helping. None of that's conducive to for them, for you guys, to keep this inventory up. And um, until y'all start getting where y'all can say, okay, you've got a new bricker you can, or briquette or whatever you call this thing, that you can make more brick briquettes. You've already done a knowledge that we've got to increase the demand. You went up, what, 10 tons from last year, and you're going to double that again this year, and whatever the outrageous exactly. number was. I mean, y'all are you're cranking out a mass amount. It's not like this is a cheap product. <laughs> Sounds like to me your product, your process to making a briquette, being that it's coming from real wood, is a much harder process and more time-consuming process to make than like a Kingsford or whatever things that are out there so. right the other the other manufacturers can source the raw materials from the ground um i don't know if you want that in your grill or not or you do you want that on your food or not not i don't want that on mine so ours right. does come from our our lump process we take the smaller fines and make up our cats and then even after that we make our uh if i can find it again i keep throwing it in here even after that we make our char log so right this is right. the third step process this is a second step process so we right. do appreciate everybody's patience. Um, so if you can think about it, we make our lump, then we make our briquettes, and then we make our char logs from it. Yeah. So, so it does it, take more time. Our lump is more in stock now. You can find it. Six months ago, you couldn't find it. Um, some of the numbers that you said are very significant. We did increase our production by 40%. Again, in 2020, we made 10 million more pounds of charcoal than we did in 2019. We were scheduled to do the same in 2021. Wow. 10 million more so but the demand was up 60 percent. so instead yeah. of somebody going in and buying one or two bags they're buying three and four bags right. um and that's that's that has helped it was our best year ever but then it's the worst year ever for the consumers our lawyer customers that can't find the product um we don't want to change the formula we're not going to cheapen it up that's one thing duraflame is uh definitely when you buy a premium product you don't thank go, you, you thank do. you Thank you, thank you. And I think that right there is what everybody needs to understand. The product's not going to change. They're not going to sacrifice. Although the demand is high and everybody's wanting it, they're not going to sacrifice the quality just to throw it out there and make a buck off of us. And for that, I can be as patient as I need to be. I'll keep looking around. I'll keep scratching. I'll keep checking my ACE. I'll keep checking my academy. You can find it. It's out there. Papa Joe Grilling Supply in Hutto, Texas has it. 
S- uh, Sweet Swine of Mine, Swine of mine. Mark. SSOMD.com has it. If you need it, there is people out there that can get it. So the people that are saying, I just can't get I can't get it. If your Ace Hardware can't get it for you, check out SSOMD.com. Check out um, uh, Papa Joe Grilling Supply in Hutto, Texas. There's a link on Barbecue Champ Academy's website. All of our partners, there's a link right there on the bottom. You can click it and it'll take you directly to their website. Go get it. Uh, I know the barbecue store in uh, Hempstead, Texas. Dustin, I don't know if if, if he's got it. So that's another. It's a link on Barbecue Champ. We put those links there for you to help you find products. Go to bbqchamps.com. Go to our website. If you don't want to know, if you're trying to find it, go to that website. Scroll to the bottom of any page on our website. There's a link to Peppa Joe's. There's a link to Mark Lambert. I think Mark's may not be. We was doing some changing. It may not be on there, but it's ssomd.com. I know the barbecue store is on there as well. He has it. Brian Crawford did tell me he's out. He is trying to get some, but he's another one. So there is people out there that have it. You just got to dig around. You got to look. Look, buddy, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate everything, man. Thank you for making such an outstanding product. Thank you for coming on and telling us what's going on with BNB. It sounds like the future is going to be very bright. We just got to get through this rush, this pandemic. Things are starting to open back up. Maybe maybe the grilling will slow down. I don't think that's going to happen. I hope and, not. Uh, I think, I think it's going to just keep going because what's done happened, that trend has done started. People now realize I don't have to go out and eat all the time. I can stay at home. I've learned it. I've had a ton of people calling me with Barbecue Champs Academy taking our classes, and they're telling me I love it. I'm learning more than I ever knew possible. So great segment. Learned a lot. Thank you much, Mike, Ed, and Mike. As always, quality matters. Yes, David, I appreciate it, and I appreciate you being um, one of our partners as well. Uh, Ed, any final words? Hey, not all charcoal is created equal. Quality matters. Yeah, that's about as that's about as as, as sums it up as best as it could. Ed, we appreciate it. We're gonna we'll give you five or six months to get things rolling. We'll bring you back and, and kind of give us an update. Be patient, guys. Look around. There's places out there that has it. If you're in need of it, go to our website. Go check out Peppa Joe Grilling Supply. Go check out ssomd.com, Mark Lambert Sweet Swine of Mine, the barbecue store in Hempstead, Texas. Another link on our website. They have it. Uh, just keep looking around. I appreciate everybody Thank being you, here. Mike. Appreciate Thank you. Happy birthday, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I hope everybody's enjoyed it. We're going to just keep trying to bring informative information on Barbecue Champ Academy Live. We appreciate all of our loyal listeners. We thank you being with us every Tuesday at 7 o'clock Central Time. Make sure that you follow us on our Facebook page. Make sure you follow us on our YouTube channel. If you are not on our YouTube channel, we usually post these on our YouTube channel so you can go watch them there as well. Uh, But mainly just trying to build up our subscribers there. And uh, definitely, if you are not following us on our Facebook page, it's Barbecue Champs Academy. Go like us and follow us on our Facebook page. And uh, you never know. We always give out quite a bit of information on that as well. Uh, And we've also got an awesome newsletter if you're on our website. Uh, If you go to log out and if you're not on our newsletter, we put out a newsletter eh, about once a month or so. We'll throw out a newsletter as well. Uh, Any final thoughts? Any final words, Ed? Mike, thank you so much for all you do for the barbecue community. The more people get outside cook, the better. Everything tastes better cooked outside. Um, And thank you for all the information that you're putting out there with your classes. Uh, And we're just happy to be part of the Barbecue Champs Academy. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Ed. And uh, we appreciate your support as well. Um, Once again, guys and gals, we appreciate everybody being here. Uh, As we always say when we're closing our classes, have a lot of fun and smoke on.